here in the telegraph. For a bear, I'll bite. I hear his foot's all right. Of course, it all deep and to be red last night. I know it's violent. Hello racing fans and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the Saturday, July 12th races at Hastings. Uh, of course, the first one, as usual, uh, starts off at 1.50. Yeah. Uh, we do have seven races and also we got a little action in between races too uh, this weekend with the, the, ever uh, popular the little uh, wiener dash dogs. the yeah. wiener dog races. So uh, it should be a lot of fun, uh, but still if you're... Can't, we won't have any wiener dog races here, but I'm sure we'll have uh, we won't lots cover, of good food. We won't cover them for the lack of form no. on the wiener dogs, but uh, it's, it's one of the dates on the calendar. It's a great day to take the family out. I'm sure uh, the weather looks yeah, like it's, it's going to cooperate. Hot. And uh, get lots of kids, family, good day races. Some good races on uh, TAPA today and tomorrow, uh, as we'll get into uh, on the Sunday card. Yep. Well, let's jump right into the Saturday card. First race on tap. 16,000 non winners of two for Phillies and Mares, non three BC bred. Uh, going six and a half. Competitive field, uh, short field of six, but you can make a case for quite a few horses in here. I landed on number five, Catalia, out of the Gary Sates barn. Uh, Ameris never run this cheap. She's always been running mm -hmm. higher in allowance races, even running against the boys in allowance races last year, trying to get an allowance race to go. Finally, in her five year old year, she drops down to a 16 non two level, uh, switches from uh, Gabrielle Asensio to uh, second leading rider, kind of co leading rider. It's a two horse race at this point. Amadeo Perez and Richard Hamill. Amadeo lands on this one. I like the uh, upgrade into rider. Uh, I like her style and uh, running against some pretty tough fillies, I think that makes her very competitive in here. The second spot I went to the four, I dig that out of the John Snowbarn. Uh, was running in Maiden Specialway most of her life. Uh, you look at the horses, you know, got beat by Farniente, Champagne Gals, Sensational Beauty. Some nice horses. Dropped to the uh, $25,000 level. Made no mistake. Won in a decent time of 118 flat. Now she drops down to 16 non two. I think that fits her well. And she looks like she might be the controlling speed in here. She might get away from them. In the third spot, I went with a horse coming out of California for a good friend of the uh, Derby, good friend of the show, Mr. George Morgan. Uh, Broker Maiden down there, first out for Maiden 20. Went into some of those allowance races, uh, those allowance 40 races, which are pretty salty. Uh, but last time she ran a 12-5 non-2 at Santa Anita against uh, Mares and only got beat a half length. I think that puts her right in the mix in a 16 non-2 here at Hastings. I got her in the third spot. I got four, five, five, four, three, sorry. Yeah, I see a bit of speed in here. I see the three and four knocking heads. Yeah. I see Dream Baby going, and, and I see I dig that going. And they both look like need to lead types, and I'm a little concerned with their, either of their chances of, of staying. So I was between Catalia and the two Princess Zeta. I went to yeah. Princess Zeta, dropping out of a 16,000 open race against Hidden Harbor. Those are a lot tougher company. Yeah. And that was her first race in over a year. Uh, I, I thought it was a good effort. She, I know she got beat a long ways, but still, uh, I, I thought she went, ran well, despite a very slow pace being set in front of her. Uh, I, I think she'll get a favorable pace scenario. And as long as she doesn't bounce off of that effort, I think she'll be dangerous. I agree with your assessment of Catalia. Big rider change, company change. There's lots of things that point to Catalia. But unfortunately, the price will likely be quite small. But uh, still, I can see her winning. Uh, yep. Good works for, for Gary Sates. Uh, his wife, Sharon, owns the horse. And a uh, uh, nice little live one here for them. And uh, Catalia, could, I could see this horse winning. It was between two and five or five and two for me. Yep. Because I, I'm just banking on, 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 a, on a pace battle. And I put Dream Baby in for third. Richard Hamill rides for Mike Anderson. As you mentioned, George Morgan. This one coming up from uh, tough Santa Anita circuits. So I, I put that one in for third. But I went uh, two, five, and three in the Saturday opener. On to the second race. $16,000 uh, older geldings going a mile on the 16th. I ended up on the sixth Glencoe Kid. Uh, I'm going to try this one to win it. Uh, I don't know if he can beat these kind of horses. You know, he's a very good two and three year old, but you know, it's been a, things have been a little lean of late. So he's into uncharted territory against a lot of horses that have won a lot of races, like Bear Rock and Roll, who's won it's like 17 races lifetime, and, and again, he's won a pile of races as well. And I think those are the two horses he has to beat. But I, I just think from the out, he had no chance this year. Uh, both of his races, uh, he ran against Commander and Casino Boss. Uh, obviously uh, needed the race. He'd been off a full year. Came back a couple weeks later. Had the inside. Kind of got shuffled back in the slop. Never got much position at all and ended up be getting beaten four lengths. This will be, I think this will be a fairer assessment of his ability today and he does drop in class. I'm going to try him to maybe upset the one Gandhi and the five bear rock and roll who are the obvious horses. Yeah. I mean those are the two horses. You know they're, they're the money horses. They, they show up every time at the 12, 5 and 16 level. They're always usually uh, in the exactor. So uh, I'm going to go six, one and five but I'm going to try Glencoe Kid. I have the same horses, just different. I put Bear Rock and Roll on top because I don't see much speed in here. And last time he ran, Hamill put him on the lead. Got decent fractions, but I can mm. see that happening again. He's going to be the horse that kind of controls it. And he's won 17 races. 
pretty mm. salty. Uh, I got him on top. Gamby, as you mentioned, another one. Uh, Hamill goes to Bear Rock and Roll, but uh, Gamby picks up Amadeo Perez. Yeah, a lot of shuffling going no, on. No Amadeo there, comes yeah. off of Ruffy Joe, but yeah, gets exactly. Frank. So I think Ruffy Joe will show more speed, and that's why... You know, the only reason maybe I steered a little bit away from Bear Rock and Roll is I think there might be a pace. Absolutely, it's kind of musical chairs yeah, in this I one. Uh, so I got Bear Rock and Roll top. Gamby, yep. another class old oh, horse. Cool horse. I, right, th those are the two, as Mike mentioned, that are th the most accomplished in this field. And I put Glencoe Kid in the third spot. Definitely the question mark in here. Yeah, I don't what, know if he's good enough. Yeah, yeah, what's left in the tank? Is he? Is he? Did, did he just need those two races? Now he drops into a softer spot. He's going to be tougher. It's tough to say. But I got five, one, and six in the second. On the third, three-year-old fillies for sixteen thousand. Uh, speaking of the Troy Taylor Barn, I've gone to their horse in here, Battling Brook. Uh, good out last time. Just got to be three lengths by Elusive Lily in Copper City. Some pretty tough little fillies. Uh, drops in for 16. I don't think there's anybody that tough in here. Um, I think that makes her uh, very tough in here. Nice work uh, on July 9th to 59 and 3. So she's on her toes. I look for her to fire a big one. This is going long, which I think will suit her well. She's never run long, but she's a, a broken vow. So. I don't see the distance being a problem. She's got good good numbers for the distance. In the second spot, I put Hey Did You Notice. Those, I think, are the, absolutely the two horses in here. Kind of flip-flop to which one is going to be tougher. She's just coming off a win uh, by two and a half for trainer Phil Hall uh, for 12.5. Like I say, those are the two horses mm -hmm. I see being tough in here. In the third spot for a flyer, I took the one, another George Morgan horse, Lago di Como. Uh, a horse that ran a couple times maiden special, it was no threat at all. Dropped down to maiden five to get a long race and made no mistake that day. Uh, one by three, come back for eight, sprinting again, and uh, she's just not a sprinter. No. So even though they do go up to sixteen thousand uh, dollar price for this for a three-year-old filly, that's not necessarily a big jump when you're running against three-year-old fillies. And I think maybe with the distance that she could get up there for third, but I don't know if she can uh, tackle in the top two. I went three, two, one. Yeah, I agree with the top two. I went to Hated You Notice on top. I, like you say, they're interchangeable. I was pretty impressed with Hated You Notice's race last time. Yeah. He was a lot of horse. She was a lot of horse. Uh, it kind of was rated kindly, and this horse exploded at the eighth pole. There was a lot there. This horse could have run a whole lot faster if Amadeo chose to uh, really unleash, you know, unleash the move earlier. But uh, her, her, her route race, uh, two back, wasn't bad against uh, better horses, and uh, at least she's proven she can go a little, you know, I know she didn't win or anything, but at least she's gone to three turns, and uh, Battling Brook is not, but as you mentioned, uh, this horse does have the pedigree to go long. Uh, that's the other horse in the race, you know, of course, dropping from 25 in for the 16 is the three Battling Brook. So I think it's two, three, and then somebody. Yeah. And uh, you've gone to the one, Lago de Coma. I'm going to go to the four, Irish Lyric. Uh, second run for Patty Lini gets Richard Hamill. And uh, I, I think there's some distance in this pedigree. Uh, the Mayor Irish Delta, Stefan Otis, I, I think this horse will appreciate a little more ground. I, I'm going to call for this horse maybe the best of the rest. So I went two, three, and four in the third. On to the fourth race, got some maiden 12-5 Colts and Geldings going six and a half furlongs. I ended up on the three, Red River Man. I see a pile of speed in here. Looks yeah. like the inside two want to go. Devin Ways fast, got a filly in here in PSN Cash. And uh, Cowboy Commander on the outside. There's a lot of horses that show uh, you know, pace Early presence, foot, yeah. and uh, I just think Red River Man on the class drops going to be dangerous, and uh, we didn't get any breaks. Uh, oh, we had a little late issue, but that's uh, all right. Pressing but, uh, on, press on. <laughs> uh, Red River Man, uh, I like him to win it. I got to put the seven horse Cowboy Commander in for second. Uh, this horse uh, chased some pretty fast fractions out wide last time. That was for 25 down for the 12.5 yeah. now. And I put him in for second. And I put the one, Prince Galavik, in for third. Uh, never underestimated top bar. And so at 3, 7, and 1. I see the same way. Uh, Red River Man looks like your horse in here. Uh, his race two back only got beat to three lengths. That was with uh, Gabriel Asensio and went to uh, Amadeo Perez, moved up at placing but regressed a little bit, but that was over a sloppy track. He's going to get a faster track this day. He does go back to a sprint, too, which probably suits right. him better. I got him on top. Cowboy Commanders, you mentioned, on yeah. the Phil Hall barn. Uh, big rider upgrade uh, to Richard Hamill uh, and, and, and cuts his price in half, too. And the third spot, Prince Galvick, as you mentioned, never throw out a Troy Taylor horse. And uh, he ran for this last time. Didn't run great, but, uh, could, you know, if you look at the rest, I mean, he looks like the, the best of the rest. If he, I think you go the farthest of the speed. Exactly. And uh, this is a barn that is not scared to drop horses. And they run him back for 12-5, so they think there's more there, so they kept him in. I go 3-7-1 and one in the fourth. On the fifth, claiming non-2-4,000 for three-year-olds and up. Uh, good little race here. I went to the two-tribe out of the Dino Condolino's barn. Just got beat a length last time uh, in a four-non-2. I guess a very tough Captain Salt, who uh, you know yep. was o only in this uh, condition for one race, and, and for good reason, a very tough horse. He ran second to him. I don't see anybody that tough in here, so I got Tribe on top. The second spot, I took a shot on Craig McPherson's Sterling Remark. Uh, 
two back the first time that Craig ran them here. He ran for 7,500 behind Stone Ridge Storm. And I thought that was a decent race. He ran second, got beat by yeah. three links, but a good second. Then he went to the 4,000 on two level and kind of threw in a clunker, but that was over a wet track. And I think this uh, weekend, running over a fast track, maybe he moves forward again. Craig McPherson going great guns, firing at 43% yeah. right now. You don't want to leave his horses out of the mix. In the third spot, speaking of uh, hot trainers, Troy Taylor. Uh, this horse uh, did not really break his maiden. He, he ran second in the race. Uh, the horse that beat him was uh, DQ'd. This is a logical step for him. I was looking for a third horse. I went for Pacific Crest in the third spot. I got two, four, six. Yeah, I agree with the two horse tribe. I, I see a, pr a pretty good pace in here with a one Grove Trotter going. Uh, Sterling Remark, as you mentioned, a better draw and likely to show speed. Pacific Crest to show speed, even wings at time has a little bit of uh, pace mm -hmm. uh, to him as well. And I think the two tribe, uh, you know, uh, Dino likes to use a lot of the kids in the jocks room, and it's not surprising to see him give Ryan Pacheco a yeah, shot. Yeah, he gives everybody a chance. So, That's good, uh, you know, yeah. with with Alex, uh, you know, riding, you know, obviously having to ride the Troy Taylor runner in here, uh, Ryan gets a good chance on a live horse. I think this horse will get the pr proper pace and is your horse to beat. No no value, but uh, a horse that might be a key in your pick forwards. You might be able to get a little more money out of him in the uh, multiple leg wagers. Yeah. I put the three contact man in for second. He's been nibbling of late, and uh, I'll give him an, another shot. And I put the seven wings of time in for third. He's cut out to be a little bit better horse. He was in Edmonton last fall. He's been working very well and for his return and gets Richard Hamill, so that's a plus. But I do like Tribe. I went two, three, and seven. In the fifth, on to the sixth race, uh, some allowance uh, runners here, three-year-olds. Good uh, race. Good group. Uh, some stakes, uh, I guess stakes winner in here in the Aspen Getaway. Yeah. Uh, tackling uh, some, some nice little colts. Uh, I've gone to the sixth slicer red. I'm going to try to get him into the winner's circle. I just see a little bit of pace pressure for the three Aspen getaway who was likely the no, obviously the horse to be yeah. but uh, Slicer Red's no slouch either he tried uh, you know the top three-year-olds down in Emerald Downs had a brutal trip was four and five wide yeah. early uh, lost position had to go back to last rally to be fifth but they weren't stopping in that race they went 134 and change uh, he shortens up to six and a half I just think he's going to get the night, right pace scenario I mean you look up and down here you see a lot of horses that want to be near the lead and so slice of red doesn't and uh, I know he does lose Amadeo Perez to Aspen Getaway that would have been a tough decision for him and his agent Trapper Barabee but uh, you know slice of red doesn't lose much in the rider department definitely uh, yeah he gets uh, Hamill very, gets Hamill that's yeah. a good thing and I put Aspen Getaway in for second uh, you know how can you fault his form this year? He's been very good. Got beat by Coffee Grinder. He's the top three-year-old on the grounds. That's the only loss he's had. And I put the two-horse Tempest in for third. I went 6-3-2. and two. I, I think it's 6-3 or 3-6, though. Uh, yeah, I, that's who I have. I did go to Aspen Getaway because the race two back in the Jim Coleman province, he did lay off the pace like because there is yep. going to be... He can a, sit a, off it. There's a lot of gas in here. And I think that uh, if he can just sit off the pace and make a run, uh, Amadeo Perez and uh, Anita Bolton's number is very good together. Uh, Anita Bolton uh, having a, a stellar year as well. Um, so I put Aspen Getaway on top. He just seems a little bit more accomplished at this point of the season than Slice of Red, so I gave him the nod. Slice of Red obviously in second, as you mentioned, uh, a horse. These are the two that are kind of on showcase in this allowance race. Uh, in the third spot, I went to, I took a shot on uh, Mel Snow's Carson City Brown. He is kind of a speedy type, but maybe, you know, if it's not too hot up front. Mm -hmm. uh, I just like the way his form's going, you know. He, he ran second his first out this year. Then he broke his maiden for 25. Then he won for 16. He's just a, a hard-trying horse that, that likes to win. Uh, good record. Uh, five starts, two wins, two seconds. So I could see him maybe getting up for the uh, the third spot when I was kind of looking around for a third horse. Uh, but I went three, six, and five in the sixth. On to the nightcap, the seventh. Three-year-olds and up 16,000. Non-winners are two. This is the boys' end. We covered the girls earlier. Uh, I went with the three, stole it. Uh, just won this race last time by three under uh, uh, apprentice uh, Corinne Andrews. Tracy McCarthy, another trainer that's having a very good year. Uh, always uh, look for the camo horses. They're very salty, well-bred, well-trained, tough horses. I got stolen in the top spot. I went to Leo's in the house of the Troy Taylor barn in the second spot. Uh, he's had a little time off. Hasn't run in about a month, uh, but his works look uh, handy coming in here. Nice 49 and two, nice you know maintenance yep. kind of work. Uh, his horses are always tough. I got Leo's in the house in the second spot. And in the third spot, I put the other Tracy McCarthy horse, Rebus, who I liked last time. I picked him last time. He was no match for a stablemate, stole it. But uh, I got him in the third spot. I went. Three, five, six. Yeah, I, got, I went to the five. Leo's in the house. I, I think he'll be uh, still got it. A gift last time. Yeah. Uh, he did steal it. Uh, there was no one within three lengths of the horse through much of the race. And uh, I think Leo's in the house. We'll be breathing on him. And uh, we'll see if he's, uh, you know, how good stole it is. But he definitely is a, a live horse in this spot coming back at the same level. Uh, Leo's in the house. Uh, I, 
I thought his race behind High Force and, and Peyton's best was better than the Stolet race. So yeah. I, 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 that, that race last time came out pretty soft for Stolet. Peyton's best has come back around a big one. Uh, yeah, he did. And so, too, you know, he, Stolet missed out on, on, on uh, a few toughies last time and he took, took advantage of it. So uh, I went 5 3 and I put the four horse Lord Calazar in for third. He's been working well for his return. He's had some big races down in Phoenix and uh, he, he's familiar to Hastings. You know, he ran some decent races here last year. So uh, I think his off the pace ability might, uh, you know, Get him a big chunk of the purse because there is speed in here. You got yep. uh, Samil Camin Joey, you got Irish Romeo, Steve Stinla. There's a lot of pace in here, and uh, maybe he'll get a piece of it. But I do like Leo's in the house. Uh, I think uh, his return, he'll be awfully tough. So I went five, three, and four in the Saturday finale. Up next on screen will be a quick look at our, our quick recap of our uh, selections. Uh, back in race number one, I went to the two horse, Princess Zeta. I went two, five, and three. Race number two, I went to the six, Glencoe Kid. Hopefully he can get back in the winner's circle. Six, one, five for me in the second. Third race, I went to the two. Hey, did you notice? Over the three, Battling Brook in the four, Irish Lyric. Fourth race, I went to the three, Red River Man. Three, seven, one for me in the fourth. Fifth race, I went to the two, Tribe. At probably your heavy favorite. I went two, three, and seven. Sixth race, I like the six, Slice of Red. Over the three, Aspen Getaway. Those two are pretty much inseparable for me, but I did go six, three, and two. In the seventh and final, I went to Leo's in the house. Leo. Five, three, and four for me in the finale. And there's my picks on screen. The first, I went to the five, Catalia, over the four and the three. In the second, again, I went to the five, Bear, Rock, and Roll, over the one and the six. In the third, I went to the three, Battling Brook, over the two and the one. In the fourth, again, I go to the three, yeah, Red three. River Man. Four threes yeah, today. A lot of, lot of, lot of threes. Red River Man over the seven and the one. In the fifth, I agree with Mike on number two at a short price, Tribe, over the four and the six. In the sixth, I went to the three, Aspen Getaway, over the six and the five. And again, in the seventh, I go to the three, Stole It, over the five and the six. Well, that'll do it for the Saturday, July 12th edition of Handicapper's Corner. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And uh, don't forget to try and make it down to the races. First race is at 1.50. Of course, get the Wiener Dogs, always popular yeah. on the Saturday and the Sunday. Of course, uh, next live cards will be Sunday, uh, July 13th, the uh, first race of eight on uh, Sunday to go at 1.50. On behalf of Drew, thanks for, for tuning in, everyone. Good luck in your wagers. We'll see you next time here at the Derby Barn Grill. Can do. Can do. I can do.